Alex here yet again again. Alex, so soon, I know, right? Well, in the spirit of trying to get more shorter videos out there, I've started uh, filming some of the things that I have to do as intermediate steps or just as an experiment or, you know, in my daily... Or just in my daily day-to-day -day doing stuff. So this I decided to put up. Uh, I 3D printed a little Forstner, a, uh, a guide for uh, drilling with a Forstner bit using just a regular 3 8 hand drill. And that can kind of serve an example to help you brainstorm other ideas. So anyway, here we go. Now this is a Forstner bit right here. It was made by a man named Benjamin Forstner, who invented it back in 19 dickety whenever to kind of improve on the Augur bit a little bit. And a lot of these had the benefit of using a 3 8 inch shaft so they fit in a regular old hand drill, which is very nice. But as you know with hand drilling, it's kind of hard to control when you have a large cutting bit like this. And if you're trying to drill at like a perfect 90 degree angle, it's pretty impossible. Now this is the handy little tool from Fo yeah, Woodcraft that sort of inspired this whole thing. But you know, it's 30 bucks. I'll link it below in case you guys want a nice solid cast metal one. But I also have one of these guys, which is useful for a ton of things, but it's a little bit wambly for this sort of stuff and unwieldy. Now, Forstner bits are used for a ton of different things. What I'm using this in particular for is uh, strain relief for routing or chiseling like channels. And you'll see in an upcoming project why I'm doing this. But anyways, you can take a Forstner bit and remove, say, like you have a, a big block that you want to route out or shape to kind of take all of that gunk in the middle, that excess uh, medium out of the middle, and then you just have to focus on either routing nice clean edges, or in my case, I'm probably gonna be chiseling nice clean edges. Now I'm just using this cheapity cheapy cheap cheap drill, which costs virtually nothing, but I have literally thousands of drill hours on it. This is the kind of new incarnation of it. I think it's pretty much the same mechanism. And for your personal reference, here's an RPM guide for us. Now we're gonna fall right here in our, you know, three quarters to one inch. And that's gonna be, you know, somewhere between 1500 and 500 RPM. So you can just dial this knob back a little bit to about like halfway and you're fine. Now to kind of shore the mechanism up, I added these fender washers at the top to keep the chattering bit from sort of like ovalizing the 3D printed hole because the plastic will heat up if you don't uh, lube it and you run this for a bit. And this seems to mitigate that pretty nicely so you don't have to be regularly printing out new versions of these. And you could also 3D print stop depth guides, but these are only like 70 cents a piece or something like that. So I link these in the description below as well. And the bit that I use was just this Irwin three quarters inch bit. Uh, this is also linked down below and they have a storefront up on Amazon so you can get it directly from them. Now all these can also, of course, be purchased at your local like big box hardware store or your mom and pop hardware store. So I just have links to the online stuff for you folks who live out in the middle of nowhere and maybe can't just like hop on your bike and ride down to the local hardware store. And this is what the gizmo ended up looking like. I made it compact enough that you should be able to print it out even on the smallest like 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter basic cheapy 3D printer. And then I just sliced it up in Cura. And as you can see, I just put supports selected to touching build plate only. So that'll give you some support in the middle. And you can see this bridging is gonna get a little bit sloppy, but it's really good enough without having to crack away all of the support material from inside the model, which I really hate doing. Now, as you can see right here, hopefully that's in focus. This is what it turned out as. And you probably won't be able to see it, but the overhang inside is kind of rough, but that doesn't really matter. It's just cosmetic more or less. And this is what the fender washers look like embedded in there. Now, all I did was I held them in place with some E6000, which is a very forgiving, flexible type of a glue. It does take forever to dry though. So like it kind of cures in like a day, but it usually takes a couple days before it's, you know, completely solid and not flowing. It's also very flowy and gap filly. So um, bear that in mind when you're using it, I guess. But I think that flexible glues like that have a little bit of advantage over like a hard glue, like a, like a, a hard epoxy or a cyanoacrylate or something like that, uh, because they tend to absorb some of the impact instead of breaking and causing small fissures and eventually popping off. But that's not to say that you can't do like 
I often do, whereas like use E6000 for like the primary adhesive and then like a five minute epoxy or cyanoacrylate just in a couple places to sort of tack it there to like, you know, quasi clamp it uh, because those will cure in a couple minutes and hold it pretty stiff while the other glue dries. So it's better that than, you know, having to use a clamp and sitting it on your desk for like three days or something like that. You can just sort of like glue it up, toss it to the side and forget about it till you need it. Anyway, free 50 cent tip there. So for this example, I'm just using a small piece of poplar, which is like a softer of a hardwood. It cuts very nicely. You don't have to worry about it. And that little pad is just one of the little nonstick things that they sell in rolls to put underneath uh, like drawers and things like that. It works pretty well to keep wood from sliding around and it's just a cheapy clamp to keep it from walking away. So this bit, we're just gonna put one single hole in here just to show you how it works. Now here's the guide right here with the washer on top. And we're just gonna fit that through the bottom. And you can see that this one particular fits flush with just the little, uh, you know, guide hole nubbin sticking out. So you can press that in by hand and then just go at it. And this is just a regular old friction clutch. I'm hoping this doesn't slip. It shouldn't in Poplar. Poplar is pretty soft. I'll give it a try in Maple as well and see how that works because uh, ultimately I'm going to be using this on Maple. So just a little bit of a rev to get the hole started and then go at it. And there we go. It turned out pretty well. As you can see that it's a nice 90 degree cut, nice clean sides, no problems at all. So anyway, thanks for checking out the video. Hope you got something out of it. Feel free to check out the other ones. I always have support links in the description of the video below. So as you're watching these, if you're ever like, hmm, I think I'm gonna kick Alex a couple bucks so he doesn't stop doing these videos, go ahead and check them out. More videos out soon. And until I get another one, get out there and make something awesome.